sensory memories, all kinds of things and create healing. Uh, the, other, the other way, which we're gonna talk more about is direct application. And that's where you take the oils, but they're very, very concentrated. So you have to use a carrier oil. We're gonna be using olive oil tonight and fractionated coconut oil and diluting them so that we can put them on our skin. Our, our skin, of course, is our largest organ. So when you put it on your skin, you absorb that way also. You could use it for massage. Uh, we'll be making some of these little roller bottles tonight where it's, you put your oil and then you, you put everything in, your oils and your fractionated oil. It has a little roller ball, roller ball on the top so that you can apply it. We'll talk more about them after. Um, another, oh, another route of inhalation are these, these little inhalers and you put your cotton wick, close it with your essential oils on it, and you can breathe that in. And then you cap it when you're not using it to, to keep your oils, because the oils are very volatile, like they'll evaporate. So like whenever you use your bottle of essential oil, cap it right after you use it. Okay, and then the third way of using them is one that I don't recommend um, unless you're with a really qualified person and that's taking them internally, like putting them in capsules or, um, gee, I went, to a, I went to a class once and this person was saying you could put like grapefruit oil on your water or peppermint and, you know, and drink your water. But when you think about it, water and oil don't mix. So that's never a good idea. Some people, uh, some people say, oh, just put a couple drops in your bath water. Again, that water and oil don't mix. You're gonna have little globules of very concentrated essential oils floating on your bath water, floating on your water cup. And that could be damaging. You could either get burns on your lips or you know, on your body or something if it's a strong oil. So, um, and then sometimes they're used in cleaning products. You can do some really nice uh, natural cleaning products. Uh, sources for essential oils. Uh, Jen has ordered most of the oils that we have here from Mountain Rose Herbs. And you wanna make sure when you get essential oils that they're pure oils, not fragrance oils like they use for candle making, things like that, or that you buy in Walmart. Uh, a lot of times they're, I guess you'd call it adulterated. They've had other oils added to stretch them or whatever. And so you kind of watch your brands and make sure that either online or that there's some place you can follow up and see that they've been tested, that they're um, sustainably harvested, the plants and things like that. So some of the brands um, that I know of is Mountain Rose Herbs, Star West Botanicals, I think you get them on Amazon, Plant Therapy, Rocky Mountain Oils. And then there's doTERRA and Young Living, which are, um, what do they call that, multi- uh, like you have a person who has people that sell under them and they get wholesale and, and multi something. I can't think of what they call it, but anyway, um, those are, those are two, but you end up paying, if you're the bottom guy, you end up paying a little bit more for your oils because everybody up above you has got to make something on it too. So, um, but they are good. Those are good oils, the reputable companies. Your oils should always have the uh, Latin name on them, like this is lime peel. So it, the Latin name is citrus oranifolia. I'm saying that right. And it says the plant part is fruit peel. So it's got the information. And if you go online with Mountain Rose, Mountain Rose Herb, you can find out all the testing that's been done on it. It says the origin is Mexico. And so far it's certified organic. So those are just things to, to look out for. And sometimes you can tell by the prices of the oils. Um, there are some lesser. The thing is, if, if you go into a store and they have all the oils are $5 a bottle, I'd question that because, for instance, lavender takes two pounds of lavender flowers for a 10 millimeter bottle like this, okay? And that costs $14.50, okay? Rose petals, it takes 105 pounds of rose petal flowers to get half of this much of oil. So if you go to buy rose oil, it'd be half this size and it would cost you $221.50. That's Mountain Rose prices. So 
again, you got to kind of watch for those little signs. Okay, we'll do a few safety precautions and then we can uh, show some things. Okay, so whenever you're using an essential oil, you should always do a patch test on your skin or if you're using it on someone else, do a little patch test just to check for allergy or sensitivity because we're all different and uh, we wanna make sure that it's, our, that it's okay. Uh, always dilute with carrier oil, like we said before, and that could be almond oil, uh, jojoba. We're using olive oil because it's relatively inexpensive and fractionated coconut oil. But there's all different kinds you can use. And then some of the essential oils, particularly the citrus, some of them are phototoxic. So you wouldn't want to put it on right before you go out in the sun. You'd want to give six to 12 hours. So, um, and some of them aren't. Uh, sweet orange we'll be using tonight. Sweet orange for some reason isn't phototoxic, but um, a lot of other ones are. The, the citruses. So just check that if you want to use it, you know, in something where you'd be going outside. And then some oils shouldn't be used by pregnant or nursing women or people with certain conditions or taking conflicting medications. And there's a, there's a chart on the second and third page of your handout. And it, I tried to list as many of those little precautions as I could find. The other thing is that, um, Essential oils shouldn't be used on really young uh, babies, really young children. I would use the herbs, you know, make the herbal oils and things like that, or the hydrosols, which are, which come the same companies that sell the essential oil sell hydrosols because when they do the steam distillation, that steam is collected, that water, and that's a hydrosol. And it's very mild, and, but yet it has some of the same properties. And so those would be safe to use on your babies like say a lavender hydrosol or something like that for, um, uh, for diaper area or whatever. Then as far as storage, uh, you wanna keep your oils in a dark, cool area. A refrigerator is best. If you have room in your refrigerator, that will increase the shelf life of your oils. Most of them will last one to two years, but you can increase that life um, by keeping them in a cool place. And then like we said earlier, always cap them finished. So those are the safety precautions, getting that out of the way. The second and third page of your handout is a chart I made for 16, I would say, of the most popular, most, um, uh, yeah, popular, I guess would be the word, 16 oils with their Latin names and what, what, they're, um, what they're known for, for what they, what they can do for you, and then any precautions. So for example, say eucalyptus, the second one. It, the healing benefits are it relieves respiratory conditions, reduces earaches, helps improve allergies and asthma, fights infection. It's a remedy for skin irritation and shingles, reduces pain and inflammation, boosts mental clarity, and can even be used as a cleaning aid. <laughs> so you get a lot of things you could do if you buy that bottle of eucalyptus. <clears throat> but a note is it should only be used for age 10 and up because it contains cineol, um, which is, has in a very few cases been uh, caused asthma in young children. So you could do one of two things. You could either so it's test, just it, like a test high it dose with, or whatever. Yeah, you could test it with your child or if you've already used Vicks Vapor Rub or something with eucalyptus and there's no problem, then it's up to you to use it. I'm just telling you what the warning is. And this is from Tisserand, uh, it's a, Institute that's got all kinds of testing and it's like everything in and out of essential oils if you get into taking a course. But anyway, but um, with eucalyptus, you can use cedar wood for your for your younger kids. It's a good substitute. It's still got some of the same qualities. So again, this is just a good kind reference. of reference. Yeah. And and like so tonight when you do of, your go ahead. So speaking of shingles, mm -hmm. so my son-in-law was the first, and this is weird. This was probably about going on four years ago. So he ended up getting really sick and he um, went to the hospital and they said he had shingles. And he, then he was what, 23, 20, yeah, about 23. Mm -hmm. And they did say that um, um, he was the youngest of, of North Dakota 
to come in with shingles. Mm -hmm. And so my daughter reached out to me and she's like, mom, I know there has to be a traditional um, ointment or traditional um, property that's able to do shingles. And I said, well, let me get a hold of Linda. So I got a hold of Linda and I don't remember the the whole, it, it came in a sab looking, that little silver. Mm -hmm. She gave it and she told me, tell him he needs to put this on the shingles every day, twice a day. And by the fourth day it was gone. And to this day, it's never came back. So right. um, I know there was like some essential oils in there, but I don't mm -hmm. remember. Like I said, mm -hmm. I don't remember if it was eucalyptus or whatever, but yeah. And, and so him, he's like, if this ever happens, would you be able to make me another one? You know, because <laughs> he's afraid of flare up because it was so painful, oh, it is. So you know? Painful. And um, like I said, in four days it was gone. And so he's like, I believe in it now. He's like, I truly believe in the traditional medicine. He said, because he said they gave him like two different pills. And he's like, one was a big old horse pill. And he's like, I didn't want to take it. Sure. Yeah. Well, even like that skin salve that we made, mm -hmm. you know, we used, we used herbs, we used yeah. lemon balm and calendula. We made our herbal uh, infused oil. And then to that, we added essential oils, which yeah. were targeted for skin conditions, uh, which would be some of the ones probably also for eczema or shingles or yeah. you know, psoriasis or any of those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we made our herbal oil from our plants yeah. and then we layered it with another, another added healing. Yeah. I don't know, um, by using essential oils. So it's like, I kind of like using them both. And that's why I got into studying the essential oils because I just saw that as a, like even giving the herb stuff, another boost, you know, yeah. in that direction you wanted it to go. And so, you know, again, there's so many different, different oils, but when you're first starting out, there's, there's kind of some, uh, some ones that they say lavender is like the gateway oil everybody usually starts with lavender it, it does so many things it's so good for skin it's so gentle for children and and everything so a good starter one is lavender and then your tea tree you know is is uh and your peppermint of course peppermint again is another one for kids that after i've been using it you know mm -hmm. with my own grandkids and everything then i read oh peppermint's really high in menthol which is good for a lot of things, but it could be strong for kids. And I, I think that, what does the chart say? Um, not recommended for under six. So, but they say spearmint is gentler. So you could substitute spearmint for peppermint, or since I've already used it with my grandkids, I just continue with the peppermint. And remember last week we made those little roll-ons for uh, insect bites, which is an out, which is an owies, and we used peppermint in that, and so that menthol was really good for the insect bites. Um, some other beginner oils would be like sweet orange or um, lemon. Those are all like they're all like five dollars to ten dollars a bottle usually. So those are good ones, half a dozen or so to get started, and some of them you know are just they're so interchangeable. Is your question? Oh, so, all right. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about the dilution guidelines. Just know that you dilute more for children than you do for adults. Uh, for adults, you kind of, you tend to use like a 2% dilution and all the way down to like a half of uh, a percent for your, your little ones, two to six year olds. And there's a whole chart in here that breaks it down. And this is, this is that Tisserin that I was talking about, Tisserin, or I'm not sure how you pronounce his name, um, the Institute. And for instance, like 10 milliliters are these little roller bottles we'll be doing tonight. So if you were doing it for an infant or a child, you'd only use one or three drops. For an adult, you'd use six. Six drops of an essential oil in here and the rest fractionated coconut oil. So that's, that's the um, dilution. When we do the massage oil, we're gonna use one ounce spray bottles. So here, you know, it tells you how many drops to put in, but I'll also have it on the tables. 
but this is just if you get your own oils and you want to start you know doing some different things with them it's different all in the handout production. yeah so i want to just try to save time for everybody and so for each thing it has like in a diffuser how much you put in and a roller bottle or an inhaler like this how many drops to put in and i kind of geared it for adults but we put the other ages too anybody have questions Armando, madonna Yes, hi, and uh, thank you for asking, and thank you for the instruction. Uh, before I had asked the questions, I was trying to uh, reference the materials that was provided, and I think I may have uh, answered my question, which was the ratio of um, how to break it down between oil and the uh, plant, you know, the different components of making the actual essential oil. What is, is there a standard, um, ratio that is used uniformly for all uh, medicines for all plants or is there different um, I'm not sure how to, I'm calling it ratios and I'm calling it um, medicines solutions or, uh, solutions yes is there solutions are, okay are there yeah like um, uniform uh, formulas for them all or yes, do they yes. vary um, no your dilutions are let's see it varies by age group, okay? And this is for the essential oils. This isn't for herbal oils, which we've done in other classes where we infuse, we take the herbs, your dandelion leaves or your plantain or whatever, and then you add your olive oil to cover and you warm it and you infuse your oil. That's an infused oil, not to be confused with essential oils, which we're not making these, we're making things with them tonight. And so we're diluting them because you don't use them straight. I hope that clears it up. So then in your handout, it has the different dilutions. Uh, for example, the inhaler, okay? These shouldn't be used by under six. So say six and six years up to maybe 12, you'd use five to 10 drops in an inhaler. For an adult, you'd use 10 to 15. So there's, that would be your like dilution rate. Um, the roller, the roller bottles that we're gonna be using, six, uh, two to six years, you'd only add three drops, like in a massage oil. Uh, for six years and older, nine drops. In an adult, you'd add 18 drops. That's in one ounce. But it's all written down. I don't wanna just go over and over it because I didn't want it to be just, um, monotone, but it's in your handout. And then we'll put that into practice as we're making some different things tonight. Does that answer your question? No, yes. The clarification of essential oil and what's the other one? Herbal oils. Herbal oils, yes. Okay. And it's all new to me, so I'm using terms very loosely and okay. I don't know the technical or specific <laughs> language. So thank you for uh, clarifying that. Okay, sure. Look out, Armando. You're going to be professional <laughs> on this next. <laughs> hey, keep sending me the invites. I'll show up. <laughs> <laughs> you could teach class to the men. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I think that would be something worthwhile to not only share instruction and information, but then to teach in a way to where people continue that teaching. And in different spaces, we can always have more representation of others. And so in why, I say, in why I say about men, um, sometimes the men do come to class, but a lot of times the men like to have their own class because mm. they don't want to be feeling inferior with the women. And we've also done it where we've done classes just for the men. And usually I just, you know, get the class going and stuff and um, introduce the teacher. And then the male instructor, I always tell him that um, I'm going to leave so you guys can have that one-on-one. Um, -on -one. And, and I always say, um, have good conversation, meaning um, make, the, make the conversation very open. Because a lot of times in, in the country, our men are very seclusive or they're, um, they don't talk or, you know, and so the times that we've had male, um, only male classes, um, the instructor always gave me good feedback of knowing that, you know, a lot of them said, 
we want more classes like this because we never get a chance to have it. So we try to, you know, include the guys. Um, I just wish I had more male teachers and I don't want to overdo it with uh, what male teacher I have here. So, so if you learn and, you know, you're ready to teach, let me know because we could do some classes for the men, men folk too, you know. I could just let my mustache grow out. <laughs> uh, ready to I, I, I couldn't be the person who said that, but I was uh, maybe you want to go a little bit deeper, you know, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> go a little deeper. Oh my goodness. Okay. But, um, but to that point, Jen, you know, these are ways that just for the food for thought, I would like for us to follow up on on how we can collaborate uh, between our groups that we work with. Mm -hmm. uh, you hit it on point. This is a way to infuse local community and as well as involvement that um, I'll be more than happy to be involved with myself and to uh, to support. Yep. We got to support our men, you. you know. Yep. And we as for our women and sisters. Yep. <laughs> it works both ways. Yeah. Okay, so then um, where to apply essential oils after you dilute them? We said your skin is your largest organ, but you don't want to get them in your eyes or your mucous membranes, but you can apply them, like suppose if you do a lavender oil for headaches or something, you could do on your temples, behind your neck. Um, you could put things on your wrist, your abdomen, if it has to do with the digestion. Um, and then the soles of your feet, don't forget about the soles of your feet. And this is the interesting thing. The soles of our feet have more pores than any other part of our body. And I read it and I, I forgot, I was gonna try it and I didn't get to, but they say, if you tape a piece of garlic on the bottom of your foot, within 20 minutes, you'll taste it. That's how fast um, our feet can, those pores can pull stuff into our body. Well, it makes um, sense why our parents use vapor rub on the bottom of our feet. Yeah, exactly. To, I, I'll, I'll admit that I probably just thought it was like tradition or customary or something to where Oak you had, had to even eat some of it, but there was some truth to this application. It was, and you probably missed that class, but we did a class during the winter and we made our own, like a Vicks Vapor Rub. It was with, um, we used essential oils and herbal oils and, and beeswax, and we made our own all natural. So whereas your Vicks Vapor Rub, that was, that's a petroleum product. And now as a mother, I wouldn't want to put a petroleum product on my kids. But when I was a kid, it was smeared all over me. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, but thinking about, I put a little, a small version of a reflexology chart in the, in the um, handout too. Cause to think about that, if you make a massage oil with your essential oils and, and you have the opportunity tonight, you could, you could massage your feet or your child, children's feet before they go to bed, put socks on them and send them to bed. And, and uh, who knows what you'd be healing on them <laughs> if you believe in, in that. And I think there's something to it. They say there's an extension, every nerve or whatever of the body has its part in the foot. So besides, yeah. And who doesn't love a foot massage, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, with the time we have left, um, we're going to, I'm going to show a couple things that you can make that are really easy. And then um, we'll circulate to round of the stations. Okay. First of all, um, and Jen, you tell me if you can see it. Mm -hmm. These are uh, uh, shower steamers and all it was a cup of baking soda and a fourth of a cup of water, mix it in a bowl till it's like, um, like wet sand and then pack it in these little, uh, I don't know if you could make soaps in them or we did lotion bars before, just these little, you could even use an ice cube tray if that's what you've got. And you just pack that wet baking soda in and you can put your essential oil on then, but I, I find that it, it kind of dissipates. So what I do is, is dry them. And then when you're ready to use it in your shower, then put a couple drops of the essential oil on it. And when you use it in your shower, you wanna put it not directly under the water, but like a little bit maybe in the corner where the water will hit it, but not, not uh, break it apart right away. And that way your essential oils will um, come out in the shower. And you could tailor that to whatever you want. Do you want uh, maybe orange to wake you up in the morning or peppermint 
or are you congested and you want to throw a little uh, eucalyptus on it, you could use it, you could tailor it however you want. Um, these happen to be little flowers, but um, anyway, so that's one thing you can make very easily. Okay. Next thing is, and it, again, the recipe is in your handout, is a stress, they call it uh, aromatherapy stress balls. <laughs> and I'm not gonna um, make it, I'm just gonna kind of demonstrate. You would need a cup of flour or thereabouts, and then a funnel and put the flour into your water bottle. That's why it says a, a a dry used water jug. And that's so that you can then stretch your balloon over the top of the water bottle and get the flower into it, into the balloon. Oh, okay. Does it just slide easily or do you have to like coax it? Um, well, I just stretched it. What in between though, after you put the flour in the water bottle, um, then you're gonna to wanna to put, I think it's about 10 drops of essential oil and, and kind of mix that up. Can you smell through the blue? You tell me. Yes. Yeah. That's weird. Can you tell what smell that is? I smell hand sanitizer and... <laughs> I don't know. That's orange. Okay. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, you need like a kind of a heavy balloon and I think these are 12 inch. And so after you put, you, you put your essential oil into the flour and then you stretch this, or what you would do is blow it up like maybe twice as big as you want your finished product to be. And then you stretch it and then it's pretty easy to, <laughs> to then shake your flour into it. And then after the flour, flour is in it, then you just pull it off and you tie it. Do these mold when they put essential oil in after a while? Mm, I don't think so, but it's airtight. So this is one that's done. Um, that's a, a cup of flour and I think it would be good for kids in a classroom or just like a fidget. Yeah, or a fidget. it's a homemade stress ball. But you've got your, your uh, essential oil, you could tailor it to whatever relaxing oil or whatever. I think uh, orange is nice. So you know, that, that kind of reminds me of kids that are autistic. Yes. Yeah. They have to have something in their hand all the time, you know, mm -hmm. and fidgeting, and that would be something that you could have and then a relaxing well to add it to it. Yes. Yep. And then the other thing along that line is uh, aromatherapy Play-Doh. And this is, gosh, I even enjoy it myself. <laughs> so I did too. And for one recipe, uh, it's one cup of flour, third of a cup of salt, two teaspoons of cream of tartar, which acts as a preservative in it, a cup of water, a tablespoon of, I use coconut oil, but you could use any oil, and then your food coloring. Um, and you get these really nice, it's, can you see it, Jen, on that thing? Mm -hmm. Okay, really nice texture Play-Doh. It doesn't dry out. Um, yes, yep, sure. This one's orange cinnamon, and um, I used powdered cinnamon and then a little bit of cinnamon bark essential oil mm -hmm. with the orange, and that came out pretty nice. And what yeah. I what I'm storing them in when they're first done and they're nice and warm, oh, it's so inviting to cold now because they've been sitting down here, but um, show you. Show your mom. These are, uh, they're just the right size for frosting containers. Oh, frosting. actually does it I make just, them like mold yeah. and stuff? It's, it acts as a preservative. I just need some for the, like the same thing for the, um, the kindergarten class. Mm -hmm. And, but I didn't put the essential oil and I put the food coloring and everything and I whip them in babies mm -hmm. and they play with them with the, their Montessori so then they can have their little, mm -hmm. you know, little mat all and they make stuff and yeah. whatever. If I ever do it again, I'll add the central oil. And central oil, sure. There. And then you could put glitter, coffee grounds, you know, you add things for texture, like mm -hmm. you said, for your, you know, kids that are very tactile, mm -hmm. um, all kinds of stuff, you know, little girls, you could make it frozen and make it like purple Play-Doh with glitter or something, you know, yeah. how, you know, how. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, I don't mean to be sexist when it comes, especially when it comes to Play-Doh. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, the, you guys that are here tonight can, can take some samples with you. I brought some 
So is that just for, um, I guess, play purposes? Was that actual Play-Doh with uh, essential oils in it? Or yes. does it serve kind of like a medicine ball with some um, uh, elements to it? Well, I would say it's it's Play-Doh and but anybody could use it. But you put your essential oils in it, but what oils you choose, you would tailor to what purpose you want to use it for. Uh, for instance, if it's cold and flu season and you want to put some eucalyptus and peppermint or something in it to like help with congestion, that would be a good way to get kids to imbibe those oils. Uh, you might want to just do lavender or something that would be relaxing to calm, calm someone down. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And you got my, uh, my thought process, which, which is my hamster on the wheel going. And <laughs> I, can, I can imagine kind of like, and in a very long, big picture, futuristic sense that like everyone uh, should have some kind of uh, emergency bag in their home. In the case of an emergency, they got something to grab that has some basic uh, first aid or, you know, clothes, water, et cetera. I can imagine kind of like having a general supply in a medicine cabinet having uh, different um, play dose for different purposes for every family. Mm -hmm. I can mm -hmm. imagine that being kind of like a, um, uh, an, an art version of a medicine kit or of a medicine sure. cabinet. Sure, sure. Um, we did first aid, herbal first aid last week. <laughs> I don't know if you caught it or not, but you might no, be able to go it. back and watch the YouTube. We actually made first aid kits with herbal things for families. Oh, wow. Now to so. my thought process <laughs> is, okay, how do we scale that? How can we calculate what would be what would be needed to serve the community at large with these kits? You know, um, A lot know. of supplies to make these kits. Yeah, no doubt. And I'm curious of that inventory. I'm curious of what that would take, but that would be a follow-up conversation. Um, sure, and you know what? Maybe Jen, uh, after class, could send you the handout from last week because that would might answer. It would get the wheel spinning for you. So seeing what we included. So, like Deb's classes. This is your. How many now? How many classes have you taught? Four or five. Four or five. So, just give you a heads up. Um. So with COVID, but still we were trying to maneuver and menangle. <clears throat> so when I write these grants, I write for 30 students. So I wrote this grant um, that I buy out of this. This is a third, three year grant, so it ends this year. So I buy for three, 30 students. And so with these new classes that she's been teaching, um, so whether we have 30 students or not, I still buy for 30 students because that's what I wrote. So we have quite a bit. So we're planning to have more classes down the road to utilize what was already bought. But just kind of give you a heads up. I probably spent in the last, for all her classes, we're looking at about five to $6,000. And that is, um, how would you say? Um, like a thousand per class? Yeah, it's roughly about almost a thousand per class, you know? And so people, you know, and, and I write it, I write it so the students can take something home. Mm -hmm. um, so whatever anybody comes to class, whatever they make here, they take it home. Um, other than that, um, yeah, it's not cheap. <laughs> these are these classes are not cheap, so I always try to write for a great amount of money, so people can have an opportunity to take home what they make. So we're going to move over to the next session. Yes. Now we have the four things that the participants are going to make tonight. The first one is very simple: little lava stones. You put your essential oil, whatever you want. I did one earlier. This is lavender in, in this with a little stone. The lava stone, you just pull your little page apart. Like it's like a little slinky and you pop your ball inside, put the chain on it and you've got an aromatherapy necklace. Oh, so you just soak that in there? You just, you could just put your couple drops on it. And then, you know, when it, when the smell wears off a couple days, whatever, you can put more oils on or a different oil. So 
just just a kind of fun little thing that it'll be fun to do with um, with a group. And I thought you'd enjoy that. I'm going to move on to the inhaler so we have time to get everything in with our filming. Okay, these are the inhalers. There's three three parts to them. Actually. Okay, so this is the part you sniff. We're gonna soak it with some essential oils with a cotton wick, put it in, cap it, and then this is the cover. That's simple. Yeah. Um, so, there it is. All right, so when you do them, you want, you're gonna put your essential oils on the uh, wick in a bowl, a glass, glass or ceramic would be better. This is wood, but we're gonna do it quick, so. It, it won't, the wood won't have a chance to be too porous. Okay, so. The inhaler, we're going to use, we're going to do them for adults, uh, 10 to 15 drops for an adult. And there were some suggestions with some little combinations, blends. You can do your own if you want. But one that I thought would be nice for this time of year is seasonal allergies blend and it's lavender, peppermint, lemon, and tea tree oils. And what we're going to do, I'll just do them. Four drops of peppermint and you can just drip it onto your wick. Four drops of lavender and it's in the handout if you wanted to do it the, the same at home. four lemon, and these are all things that are good for clearing the sinuses, and two tea tree. If you have tweezers, it keeps it from getting all over your fingers. You just wanna rub it around, roll that wick in the essential oils. Drop it into the inhaler. There, you click the little bottom in and you've got your allergy inhaler. On the cover part, there's a little label because we should always label things we make, what's in it and the date. So here it has the mixture that we put in the blend and the date for 2021 and it's ready to go. You can do these for all different kinds of things. You can, um, I thought seasonal allergies would be, you know, a good one to do tonight, but you could do happy place, which is just, you know, to a, a well-being, um, cold flu, which is peppermint and eucalyptus and rosemary and lemon, but all those oils are here. So participants, you get to choose what you want to do. <laughs> other, um, other than um, the oils themselves drying out, is there mm -hmm. any um, expiration or life to things that are either in a wick or uh, other than a liquid form? Um, they say these will go about six months, um, but it actually depends how often you open it and how, how, how long it's open because the essential oils are volatile and they'll disappear after a while but you can always add more to it. You can always take that cap off the bottom, add more oils and just extend it. It as itself, it's not gonna like mold or something, you know? Um, we're gonna do something with olive oil after and I'll explain that one, how that one you have to watch the date more on, okay? This is what, five, six? <laughs> this is the one when I squirted myself last week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I brought my apron today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, this is the one where, we're, where we can talk a little bit more about expiration. What we're going to use for our carrier oil is an infused oil that we made from our, from our other class with, the, with the, the skin salve. This oil was made, it's, we used 
lemon balm and calendula flowers. And we topped it with organic olive oil and then it was warmed and then sat for over a week. So it's really good infusion. And then those plants were strained out of it. And this is the oil that's left. So we had some extra and I thought this will make a really good base for a massage oil. You could use this by itself. Both of those plants, both of those herbs are excellent for skin, okay? Um, and have all kinds of healing properties in and of themselves. But what we're gonna do is add a few essential oils and beef it up a little bit. Now, when the participants do theirs tonight, they're gonna look at the chart, that chart of the 16 oils that we have here and decide what they want to tailor their massage oil for. Do they wanna be something to rub on their children's feet at night before they go to bed? So maybe use lavender and some things that are like, would induce sleep, sleep. or relaxation or- Melatonin. <laughs> Do you have any droplets of melatonin? No, I don't know. You might be able to put that in, but, but I know lavender would be one that's very, very relaxing. But you could look at the health, healing benefits of the oils. Now, uh, for mine, I'm going to, and first you put the oil, the essential oils in, then you top it with the olive oil. Okay. okay with the so um, I'm going to go on the chart. I'm going to go with thyme and ylang ylang. They're good for healthy hormone balance, along with a lot of other things, skin health and so on. So I'm going to go for balancing hormones. I'm an older woman, in case you didn't notice. Um, <laughs> I'll put in a few things that would be that I might want to put on my feet or I might want to rub it on my abdomen or something um, mm -hmm. and just and just use it. Okay, so thyme, ylang ylang, ylang ylang, I guess you say that, and maybe some geranium. Okay, so for a massage oil, if you look at the tisserin chart, and also it's in, in the handout again, it's a one ounce bottle, 30 milliliters, and for a 2% dilution, which is for an adult, we want 18 drops. So if I'm gonna use three different oils, I want a total of 18 drops. So I'll just do six drops of each. So, okay. Remember we cap them when we're not using them. Geranium. Geranium. Do you notice the, um, some of them drip faster? That's a different viscosity of the oils, just, just based on what plant they come from. And if you get an extra drop here or there, it's not like a real big deal. It might be if you were doing it for a two-year-old, you know, but for an adult. Okay, so we've got 18 drops of essential oil. Now we're gonna add, how many? 18 all together? Yeah, wow. 18 all together. Wow. Um, Cause okay. it's an ounce. Oh, okay. Okay, this is an ounce. Um, and then the rest is gonna be our herbal infused oil. And you wanna put that in just up to the shoulder of the bottle so you have room for your spray top. Otherwise it floods over and makes a mess, an oily mess. You've never had one of those. I never. <laughs> <laughs> Last week I did a really big one. <laughs> Just splattered all over. <laughs> well, it was that other oil. I'll explain when we get there. Okay, so these little bottles have little sprayer tops. And I got them at Amazon. I put the label on ahead of time. Massage oil, organic olive oil infused with lemon balm and calendula herbs and essential oils and thyme and then I and the labels you guys will be using you're going to add your essential oils what you want to put in um, thyme ylang ylang and geranium okay so that's for hormone support um, so it's in the bottle I also put tape you know like that clear packing tape over the labels because oily stuff sometimes uh, spreads your type print whatever so there's your 
massage oil. And one more thing while we're still on camera, and that's making these little roller bottles, which are so handy. Um, you can do so many different things with them. How's this different? Okay. For this one, we're going to do Sweet Dreams, which is a, a, a blend for uh, encouraging sleep and relaxation. It's got, it's going to have lavender, cedar wood, and sweet orange. And for a aromatherapy bottle for these little 10 millimeter bottles for an adult, it's six to seven drops. If you're doing it for children, three drops, six and older, and one drop for two to six years, because technically you don't even want to use a lot of essential oils yeah. with babies. It's better to avoid it. But if you did want, you know, something. So we did last week with our first aid kits, we did a itches and always an itches blend. And it was, it, it had lavender, spearmint for younger kids, peppermint or, and then tea tree. And that is just really good to just roll it on, uh, <laughs> an itch or a, you know bee sting or whatever smell essential oils you can smell it <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> so we're gonna do the sweet dreams blend tonight but there's a few other ones that the participants might want to do too and we we made up some labels this time so you can use a label and then tape it on isn't it different that's different yeah i know hey have you guys ever smelled yang langling Lang? E -lang, e -lang. E -lang, e -lang. <laughs> lang lang it's a flower but it's by the, way, by the way it's being pronounced i don't know if i do if i want to <laughs> <laughs> i screwed it up sorry guys that it's <laughs> try it <laughs> okay i really you know, you're all on my witnesses jen's the one who told me to <laughs> okay <laughs> try it just see if you could say it, Armando. So for this sweet dreams roller, we're going to use lavender, cedar wood, and sweet orange. And so to to do that, we're going to do um, three drops of lavender, two sweet orange, and two cedar wood. So we'll get that done. Three, two, yeah. Cedar, three. cedar wood smells good. She, we're going to be smelling. They'll be like, well, wait, go to the visitor center. Your... You walk out, you're just smelling. <laughs> Our sinuses are cleared. Kind of pull out your little medicine kit out of your purse and <laughs> well, it's getting there. You need a few more classes. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's neat, they, these little bottles, they have a little orifice, so it only lets usually one drop out at a time, which makes it a little bit easier. Oops. Instead of dumping it on. Mm -hmm. Oh, now that one's very. <laughs> Got a couple essential oils and they have a, a little, little extra. On okay, and then. We top this off with the fractionated coconut oil. This is the one that Jen got these great big gallon <laughs> bottles. And when you squirt them, they don't squirt down, they squirt so much. <laughs> so I got baptized in fractionated <laughs> coconut oil last week. But anyway, so this week we have it in a in a cup and we can do it with a pipette and not get sprayed. So again, we want to fill it to the shoulder so we have room for the roller ball on the top. I really look forward to when we can do face-to-face -face classes again, because there's nothing like making these things yourself, you know, it's just. She's tired of looking yeah. at my same face. Uh, <laughs> no, glad to have a face. <laughs> With these Zoom classes, you and feel like you're kind of talking to a, a wall or something, you know, but. It's nice to have real people and the questions and participation. Okay, so that's filled up to the shoulder. Everybody knows what the shoulder of a bottle is. It's where the neck meets, the, where it kind of curves. <laughs> okay, for the shoulder there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then your little roller, your little ball part, you just push it in until it's down all the way. Uh oh. And then these metal balls are the best if you if you go to buy roller bottles and you get these on Amazon. They're pretty cheap. <coughs> but if you can, instead of plastic balls, get the get the metal. They roll easier. And I got them on Amazon. Yep. So, and then you just want to roll that oil around to make sure it's all mixed. When you're not using it, cap it. So this is the Sweet Dreams blend. I might use this on um, 
bottom of my partner's feet. <laughs> <laughs> massage do a little bit of that reflexology <laughs> massage um but you could also put it you know under the um, back of your neck or you know your temples to relax yourself and and go to sleep just however you want to use it so that's the roller bottles any questions okay um, at the end of the handout too, or like the sources, a uh, couple of books that are very good for both the uh, properties of the essential oils. And they also have like all kinds of medical conditions and what oils um, people have used and had success with. So it's really neat. If you have arthritis, you could look up what oils would be, you know, could be good for that as well as herbs. They got those two. Um, but the last two on here says so those two books, but there's also oneessentialcommunity.com and support at naturallivingfamily.com. Both of them um, have like weekly newsletters, emails that you can get recipes. Uh, the Natural Living Family even has a master class where you get a class with them doing all all kinds of things and, and little how-tos. So if you're interested in essential oils, um, I wish you well, because they do make another level of healing. They're not, they're not like, uh, like our plants right off the plains, but they can add to and layer, add another layer. You know what's going in your body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And maybe later, maybe next fall or something, we can do one on cleaning products using essential oils, you know, using vinegar and baking soda and, and things with your essential oils. And there's even, you can even do your own uh, foaming hand soap. Oh, is, are we still on? Yep. Okay. One more, one more hint. Uh, you know how we mentioned before that water and oil don't mix. So don't just throw your oils in a bathtub. One way you could do it and do a foot soak or a bath is if you get the Castile soap, like Dr. Bronner's is one of the name brands. Um, it's a Castile soap. And that if you put the essential oils in soap, it takes it up so that then when you put it in water, it dissipates. It, it won't like float. Float. Yeah. Okay. Um, won't yeah, won't separate. Um, so if you, if you did that, you could then put it in a foot bath or in your bathtub or something. Um, and that's how when you make your foaming hand soap, too. You're using Castile soap and your essential oils and then use a foaming uh, jar. So it'd be fun to maybe do something like that later on too. All right. Thanks everybody for attending. If you have See any you. questions, if you, if you have any questions, my emails on the handout, you can always contact me. Thank you very much for the instruction and the insight. <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank you. And you guys got your handout in the email, right? Sure did. Okay, awesome. All right, see you guys later. I'm going to be taking a little break and then um, I'll come back in, I think it's the second week of May. Uh, we'll be having some more classes, but they're going to be a little bit more spaced out because we're getting in um, summertime. So other than that, um, classes will kind of pick up a little bit in the winter time but um i'm kind of taking a little brain break with um grant writing and um my covid lingering symptoms are kind of getting the best of me and so brain fog is really bothering me and i just don't feel like i'm up to par to try to multitask and um try to get a lot of things done so bear with me i will get better and then until then um it's just nice to take a little break i've been doing this for seven years now and i need a break so but other than that um this will be uploaded to um youtube under sitting bull college all the other classes are um uploaded as well so if you missed out on the class you could go back and check it out and if you have any questions please give me a call or email me. I'll be happy to help you get you in contact with the teachers or whatever, maybe. But other than that, I'll talk to you guys later. Doksha, okay. Hey, Doksha, thank you, Jim. Hey, self-care, take some of those.